salvation. This is a call for salvation. If you do not know Jesus, this is a call for salvation. The call for salvation. Respond to the call for salvation. If you don't know the Savior, this is his presentation. It's been two thousand years. Hello, welcome to Voices in the Wilderness. I'm Pastor Maria. Jesus said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repenting means to regret your sins, to change your way of thinking, and return back to God. Friends, if you've been far away from God, it's time to come home to him. He's ready to welcome you with open arms. Our scripture of the day is Psalms 42, verse 7 and 8. Deep calls to deep, in the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. My guest today is Teresa Camperin. She is the co-founder of Deep Calls and Teresa Camperin Ministries. She leads prophetic worship at various conferences around the country and carries a strong prophetic message for the body of Christ. Welcome, Teresa. Thank you for having me. It is a pleasure to have you here on our program Thank today. Thank you. And you have been an extremely busy lady here this <laughs> these few days, right? Yes, You're I have. here ministering in our region. Yes, ma'am. And yesterday, uh -huh. you ministered at, to my group at the Las Cruces Gospel Mission where I teach a Bible study. Yes. And, oh my goodness, I think you brought the house down. <laughs> <laughs> Praise <laughs> the Lord. Praise the Lord. It was great. So God has gifted you in so many amazing ways. And, uh, I mean, you're, you have this uh, amazing gift of uh, prophetic worship, okay? And so, um, it, and, uh, I think they call you the, fire, the fireball oh, prophetess, prophetess, right? <laughs> yes. And, and I saw a glimpse of that yesterday. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> because when the Spirit of the Lord is on you, you just take it, right? You yes. just go for it, yes. and that's amazing. And so I think one of the things that really, uh, why I asked you to come to my a group is because, you know, uh, one of the groups that I teach They've had some struggles in their lives. Right. You know, they've had faced addiction and uh, um, wounds in their soul, and right. just as you can, uh, as you saw. Yes. And so you can relate very well to them because you were very, very broken at I one time. I was very broken. Yes. Okay. Talk a little bit about that. Well, in my life, I mean, I was raised in a Christian home, and I knew the truth. And so when I got into my older, my teen year, teen years, like fourteen, thirteen. I began to hang out with the wrong people, listen to the wrong friends, ignore my parents. And so I, I started living a rebellious life. Mm -hmm. Although I knew the truth, I made a choice mm -hmm. to not live right with God. Mm -hmm. And so because of the choices that I made, because everybody has to make a choice. Right, right. Because, you know, when, you're, when you live in a household of, of, of parents that believe the Lord, that, that follow Christ, right. there comes a point in time in, as a child of God, as a young person, where you have to choose to serve God for yourself. Mm -hmm. You can't live off your parents' faith. You can't live off their love for God, their, their servant to the Lord, what, where, right. the, where they live with the Lord. Right. You have to find it for yourself. And I believe that every teenager, every young adult has that Cairo's moment mm -hmm. where they have to choose God or choose the world. And for me, I made the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. I allowed the, the, the temptation of the world of friends, mm -hmm. popularity, peer sure. pressure. Sure. I allowed those things to pull me away from the truth of God's word. And because of that, it, it put me into a life of really destruction and sorrow where I ended up living on the streets, mm -hmm. um, losing stuff. I had two abortions. I was raped. There were so many things that happened in my life because I chose to, to step into the world and not live in the truth. And, 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 I, and I, I thank the Lord that I, because of his mercy and his grace, mm -hmm. that he, through my mother and my dad, they prayed for me and prayed for me and they loved me and they prayed for me that now that I am serving the Lord, I'm able to relate and touch people's lives yes. with his love and his truth yes. because people need Jesus. Yes. I mean, I tried the world. 
I tried money, I tried men, I tried everything I could, alcohol, to fill that void. And Because we all have longings. The human heart has longings. Yes. The longings of acceptance, of being loved, of being beautiful, of being uh, making an impact. God, God engrafted it within our DNA Absolutely. because He created us for, for greater things. Right, and, and, exactly. And because of because I chose to allow the 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 things of the world to try to fill that void, mm -hmm. I I became hurt and I became broken and suicidal, and 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 because of that. I told the Lord when I gave my life back to Christ, I said, Lord, I want you to use my testimony. I want you to use my life to caution those and to even redirect those children, young people, who are even adults, mm -hmm. to say, Jesus is the answer. You need Jesus. This is the only way because he is life. Uh Amen. And you know, that's so true what you said, because God made us in his image and likeness. That's right. So of course, we, we crave those higher things, yes. right? And sometimes, you know, people look for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> exactly. You know? Just like that song. <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. But right. that's really what they want. They exactly. want to love. They want to be accepted. And especially yes. at the vulnerable uh, teen years, yes. right? And yes. so unfortunately, we see that that happens so much with so many uh, young young kids out there yes. that the peer pressure and I think uh, you had said that part of it had to do with peer pressure right yes it did because you know when you get to a certain age when you're in your you become where you want people to love you and accept you you want to feel important you want to feel like I'm special and I mean something mm -hmm. and I know as you get older in in age that you have to make choices mm -hmm. and you really honestly your your worth and your value comes from christ right, it right. comes from the lord and right. if you root yourself in the truth of your identity in christ that's right though when those when those temptations and those weaknesses come into your life you run to jesus and you find that in him and and the lord began to minister to me about that mm -hmm. saying you know a lot of times we teach our young adults and our children to push down those feelings push them away because they're not from God. Well, they are. The Lord gave us a, a human heart to long and yearn to be loved, right. but to get it from him first. That's so right. we try to fill a godly, uh, a godly thing with an ungodly matter, with an That's ungodly right. uh, person or a job or right. money or title. Right. And, and the Lord began to minister to my heart about speaking about that and, and saying, look, it's okay that you want to be loved. It's okay that you want to be accepted that you want to make you want to have value that you want to make impact right but it's in jesus it's that's not right. in the world it's not that's in right. man it's in god and right. so i and, and that's one thing that because of everything i went through everything that i walked out god gave me that revelation and understanding to help other young adults to come into that also and awesome. and deter them and to turn them towards this is why you feel this That's way right. this is why you have this longing this is why you have this why you have this yearning in your heart because god made it for himself right. that he might fulfill you and that you might be an extension of him on the earth amen that's so beautiful and one of the the things that i also like that that you say is that it was a choice, right? Yes. And, uh, you know, I always say that God's secret weapon is free will and the choice because we all have a choice. Yes. And when we choose right, you know, he says that the heavens open up for us every day. That's right. And he gives us, you know, life or death, blessings or curses That's to right. choose life, you know. And I think sometimes they don't think they have a choice. You know, a lot of young people or even yes. adults, yes. they don't think they have a choice, but they really do. They do. You know, they, they absolutely do. So, I mean, I'm glad that you have that as your message and that God has filled your heart with that supernatural love for his people. Because yes. uh, I know we were talking briefly uh, back in the uh, sound room about how, you know, those those functions of, of a prophet, and you carry that prophetic anointing right. too, that you have to love God yes. and love his people and love, love his the word, word. His That's word, right. right? And loving his people, I mean, that's not fake. You, I mean, you have to really, uh, that's supernatural because yes. let's face it, on yeah. our own, it's hard to love everyone. Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because right? God is love and, yes, and yes, he lives yes. inside of us. So we, 
we, we only way we can love people yeah. is by leaning on God's love and loving the way he loves. That's because right. if we try to love within our own human nature, we're going to fall short that's of it. That's right. That's right. You know, and we were talking about the, the prophetic gift. And for every gift, uh, um, I have a group called Deep Calls Ministries, and I have young adults. Mm -hmm. And I tell them that your the fruit of the Spirit is the foundation for the gifts of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So the fruit of the Spirit is the character of God that you carry so that when the gifts of the Spirit are manifested through your life, Life, that the foundation of your character is able to handle it. Mm -hmm. So, because the Lord spoke to me years ago and he said, Teresa, your character is a platform for the ministry. Right, right. And so that really, really ministered to my heart. And this was like 17 years ago right. and, that God spoke to me. And with that said, talk a little bit about uh, I mean, your ministry, where you're located, and the main uh, mission for your, your uh, ministry. Okay. What would you say that is? My, okay. Well, first of all, I have a, a ministry with my husband. It's called Deep Calls. Okay. And uh, we've been doing worship for about 17 years. And okay. the mandate is to raise up a generation of relentless intercessory worshipers who demonstrate God's power mm. through a deep intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Okay. That is the mandate on, on me and my husband's life. Mm. That is what we live by. Yes. And, and because your intimacy with God, that the, in the presence of God and that places with the Lord, that is, there is an overflow that comes out of your life okay. of what you put yourself into. Okay, and so that then then just recently, about two years ago, mm -hmm. the Lord said, "Now I'm going to start sending you out on your own," mm -hmm. because when I was a young girl, and this is when I was living in the world, I wasn't living right. Right. I will never forget this day. I was walking in the hallway, I was, and my mother pointed at me, and she said, "Teresa, you're going to be like a darling Sheck and a Joyce Meyer, mm -hmm. all wrapped up in one." And I, I never forgot those words. All those years, 13 years that I was living in the world, not serving God, I never forgot those words. And I always lived that's by them. I clung to the word of the Lord. That's and awesome. I knew that it was God. Because even though I was in rebellion, even though I wasn't walking, I knew the Holy Spirit. I knew God at, at a very young age. So and that's awesome. So when I, when I stepped into it, now I'm stepping into more of a, a preaching, teaching ministry, right. the prophetic uh, d declaring and decreeing, but also in the area of worship where I play the piano and I will sing a song, but then God will, will, will the Holy Spirit will give me revelation mm -hmm. of what is needed in the room. And I need to begin to sing the heart of the Father yes. over the people that brings deliverance and healing and restoration. That's and so this awesome. is what God has recently, just very brand new, started having me step into because my heart is for the church. I love the church. That's I love right. the bride and yeah. I want them to be free. And, and, and my yes. heart is all about intimacy. Wow. I'm all, I'm all about having a deep walk That's with right. Christ, That's living beautiful. a life of intimacy in his presence and really, really falling in love with Jesus with all your heart. You know, I love that because that seems to be my mandate too as well. Yes. We, you know, I love the, the, the body of Christ. And that's, again, it's a supernatural thing. Yes. And you do want to see them free. You want, want to see all of us actually yes. free and, and uh, just serving God. Um, you, know, the, you know, he, he made us, like I said, in his image and likeness and had a, um, a call on our life even before we were, yes. we were born, right? Yes. And, you know, I love that scripture about transforming our mind. Yes. And then once our minds are transformed, that's when we'll really know what the good and perfect will is that's for right. our lives. That's so, right. you know, a lot of people, and I know you probably will agree, um, and I see this even in older people, they, they don't know what they're calling us. They don't know what they're here for. And, right. it, it, you know, and the word of God clearly tells us it's because their mind hasn't been transformed. That's right. And once, like you, you, you know, once your mind was transformed, then you walked into your calling, you exactly. walked into your destiny. But back when you were, uh, when you were walking in the world, I know you said that your addiction was so, so bad that you were drinking how many bottles? Of I, I drank two. I was to the point I was drinking two bottles of vodka a day. Wow. And wow. I was just, I was so, so lost. And so, like, it, it had consumed me. I couldn't get out. Right. And so I knew that Jesus was the only answer. Right. You know, like, what, like I shared on my testimony yesterday, either I was going to kill somebody yeah. or I was going to kill myself. Because when you're when you are under the influence of mind altering drugs right. or alcohol, right. you do you do dumb things, you say dumb things, you do things that you normally wouldn't do, and it puts you in in situations where you can be killed or kill yourself right. because you don't have any reasoning. Right. And right. so I knew at that point in my life I had to make a decision. I had to make a choice. Right. Is it God 
or is it the world? Yeah, you just reminded me too of that scripture about the prodigal son. Yes. That he's away. He wasn't in his right mind. Exactly. <laughs> and so when we're in the world, we're not in our right exactly. minds, right? But once we yield, like you did, you yield yep. yourself yes. to the Lord, then all of a sudden it was just totally different because uh, then, of course, you submitted to him and your life changed. Completely. And, completely. And, and it was almost instantly. Yes, it was instant. Well, you know, that's so beautiful. I mean, that's a miracle because, I mean, in most cases, uh, it's a process. And right. that's wonderful, too. Yes. But when when the Lord does these miracles, <laughs> I mean, it's that amazing. is, it's amazing, it amazing. Is. So when he took that desire of, of the addiction away from you, then your life just change or, or, or how did were you saved during the process while you were still walking in the world or how did that happen I I mean it was like a radical a radical salvation for me it was like I remember one, and this is really a cool thing that I would like to share because it's a part of my testimony that when I was in the world and I was drinking and I was doing all that stuff I would tell people I would tell my friends someday I'm gonna serve God with all my heart I would actually say that I said, I'm going to live radical for God. Mm -hmm. I said, you watch. With your friends. With my friends. We're there <laughs> drinking, getting drunk. And I would tell them, one day, I'm going to serve God with all my heart. You watch. Yeah. And so all those things that God had used my, in my church when I was a child and my parents, everything that God had put into me, it never left. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage parents that that keep praying. Right. My mother kept praying for me. She never gave up on me. Right. She kept praying. And she also prophesied over you. Which yes. Is so beautiful. Yes. You know, and that's just a word yes. for, for parents that it, even, you know, it doesn't matter what we see our children exactly. doing. If we claim God's word, if we keep on prophesying over right. them the, the things of God, then, you know, it's just, they will come back. Because that's right. what the Word of God says, that if you train up a child in the way that you go, when, when they're older, older they're not going to depart, right? That's right, that's right. So, so that's, that's what happened to you. That's what, exactly what happened to and me. And now, how long ago, how, how long have you been saved? And Actually, it's been 20 years this past, this Easter. And you know what? It's it's so beautiful, Teresa. That after all this time, you still get a little emotional. I do, when, and I, I'm emotional too right now, just thinking about the things that people go through. But at the same time, I think that comes from that love of the Holy Spirit, because you know the Word of God says that those who have forgiven much, love, love much. much, love much. Yes. And and I saw that love that you had for the people there at the mission. You know that many people would call these the least of the least, but I saw how you embraced them, and and you know, and so. Talk about that radical love. You know, when I, when I, you know, when that scripture talks about those who have been forgiven much, love much, I really feel, this is what I feel like God showed me. When you recognize it, when you see it and you value what God did for you, Amen. then you're able to give that away. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yes. When I knew, when I have a revelation of the forgiveness of my sin, mm. that Jesus hung on the cross and bore my sin, that I might live eternal life. But not just eternal life, but a life of freedom, yes. a life of peace and joy here on earth. And the, as it is on earth, as it is in heaven. And when, and, and as I began to, and I, I contemplate and I meditate on what he did for me. And I, begin, and I spend time with him. I'm able to look at somebody else and say, you have to have what I got. Yeah. You've got to have it. There's no other way. Right. And, 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 and even spending time with the Lord and the Father and, and, and being at his feet and laying before him and asking him, give me compassion. Mm -hmm. Give me love. Give me, Lord, give me your love for people because that's what's going to change things. Because, right. see, I can, I can walk in my gift, yes. but if I don't have love, right. they're not going to listen to right. me. Right, right, exactly. And I know that because I've been on the other side. Right. And I'm not trying to put people down that have done that. Right. I mean, I'm, not, I'm an imperfect person, right. but I'm being perfected in a perfect God. Amen. You know, Amen. And, and so me, for me, it's been just asking God, continuously fill me with love and hanging out with love. God is love. That's right. And if you want to be like God, hang out with God. That's right. It's real simple. It is. It you is. Know? It is. I mean, that's, that's just so beautiful, Teresa. And so, but one of the things that you touched on that's so important, you know, in freeing the body of Christ or in freeing people in general, one of the biggest strongholds and uh, that 
well, that holds people back actually is unforgiveness. Yes. I mean, that will, those chains of unforgiveness yes. that we've seen, you know, the bitterness that um, you know, we've seen it, you know, and, right. and, and, and it manifests in illnesses and so many other, uh, other ways. Right. Yes, okay. it does. So, so you had to learn that. Yes, I to did. Not uh, probably to forgive others that that um, that were uh, that did evil to you, that yes. did wrong to you, but yes. also to forgive yourself. Yes. Right. So, what would you say to a person that is struggling in in a, in a minute or so? If you could look into that camera and talk about uh, how to forgive, what to do to get free of those chains of unforgiveness. Let me look in the camera. Yes. Yes. Okay. Please. So one thing that, I, that I've learned from the Lord about forgiveness is that forgiveness is not a feeling. It's not an emotion. It's an obedience to the word of God. And because the Bible says, forgive lest you, not, you be forgiven. And so the, 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 the one thing that I've learned about forgiveness is that I don't have to feel it. I have to obey God and his word because he's true to his word. And my feelings will catch up to my obedience. Because a lot of people say, well, I don't feel like forgiving. It's not about that. It's about living in God's word and walking your life according to God's word. That's one thing. And another thing that God taught me was that forgiveness does not expect a response. So you forgive people because you've been forgiven. And you forgive yourself because you've been forgiven by God. And I want to encourage you today that, that unforgiveness is like a chain around your neck. And it chokes you and it takes out the life that God has destined and ordained for your life. I want to encourage you that another thing that I did was I asked the Lord, show me. Because a lot of times hurt people hurt people. Amen. And I asked God, I began to pray. I said, God, show me their heart. Show me the root of why they're doing this. And feel, give me revelation so that I can pray for them. The Bible says to pray for the, your enemies. Pray for those that persecute you. And, and I want to encourage you to pray for them. And another thing is love them. Go out of your way to love them. Go against the feeling and live in the word. Because your feelings are up and down. But the word of God is truth. It's solid and it doesn't ever change. Yeah. So I want to encourage you. It's a choice, choice based on the truth. But he gives you the Bible says he gives grace to the humble and opposes the proud. As you choose to forgive and humble yourself to God, he will give you the grace to walk it out. That's awesome. That is awesome. So friends, this is so important. This will set you free. And you know, I would say too that unforgiveness is an impossibility without the Holy Spirit, right? Yes. So you ask the Holy Spirit to help you in forgiving Amen. yourself, others, and you'll see that it could just set you free. Amen. So, uh, so we bless people out there that are yes. struggling with that, yes. you know. And but we know that God has the answers, doesn't He? Does. he? he and it's, he does. it's so, and so. I mean, when I see the joy in your heart, when I see, and you know, one one of the things too that impressed me that we talked about is how God created us. Even when we were in, in our mother's womb, He knew exactly. He gave yes. us gifts. Yes. So He had given you this amazing gift of music that you walked away from it when yes. you were walking in the world, yes. but you came back to it. And now you sing for him, and yes. you make uh, DV CDs. Yes. And all, and it's awesome. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna hold up a, a couple of here. And I know you've done more, but deep calls to deep, uh, deep calls, dance of freedom. Yes. Okay. And then uh, deep calls advance, right? Yes. And so these are two of your uh, yes. CDs, yes, and they are so cool. You know, <laughs> Thank I was you. listening to one this morning, and <laughs> That's it was awesome. <laughs> it was really, really great. And I know you're working on, on a couple of others. Yes, so yes. we have a, a, a. We're coming out with a soaking album by the end of the year. That's so that's cool. what we're doing. We want to do people. A lot of people are asking us for a soaking CD just because we play different instruments and right. the penny whistle and the kinesinka and the, and the keyboard and the violin. And all the So we've been, we really want a soaking CD. And another one we really want to do and we're hoping by the end of this year is to do a live album. Because mm -hmm. when we go out and we do live worship, the spirit of God begins to move in the room. And he'll put a song in my heart and a, just a fresh song from the Holy Spirit will come out and I'll begin to sing the heart of the Father. And it, 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 and it does, people, I've seen people healed. People have been healed and delivered and 
I mean, just God yeah. is an amazing thing. Because it's not about us. It's, it's really, it's that's the right. anointing that breaks the that, yoke. That's and right. as, as we begin to lift up the name of Jesus, he draws them unto himself. So as we lift up the, and we begin to worship and pray him, I ask the Lord, Lord, let the signs and the wonders and the miracles, Lord, touch, I don't even, I don't even have to touch them. It's you. It's just that, touch him as I worship you. And that's so beautiful, Teresa, because it, it's his love that brings people to yes. repentance. It's yes. his love. And repentance seem, simply means when you, uh, when you ask the Lord to forgive you sincerely with your heart, then he will transform your life. Yes. He will change your life. He will uh, cause you to want to, uh, to, uh, to search the deeper yes. things of life, yes. you know, the deep, deep things yes. of life, which has happened in your life. Yes. Th that, that is so amazing. And so you even have like a prophetic um, uh, online uh, worship school or something? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, the Lord spoke to me three years ago, and he said, uh, Teresa, I want you to teach on intimacy. Okay. And, and, he, and he told me the oil of intimacy with Jesus. And he began to speak to my heart about that your mandate, what I want you to do, because other people have different callings, they do different things. Right, they, they right, teach. Right. He says, I want you to teach on intimacy. I want you to teach on people falling in love with me, going deeper with me. Yes. And then the, and in that search of seeking my heart and being with me, they're going to find their identity. Yes. And, and when they find that identity and that boldness and that confidence yes. and who, I, who they are and what I created them to do, then their impact comes, into, comes in. Yes. So the, so the school is called Deep Calls I3, oh, Intimacy, yes. Identity, and Impact. Oh, very cool. So we're going to be rooted in the intimacy of God, that's falling right. in love with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And out of the intimacy, you find your identity. That, you find out right. who you really are. I love that. And then out of that, then when you get that, then your, your effectiveness and your impact to reach nations, yes. regions, whatever God's called you to do, it yeah. becomes greater. Yes. And, and in, in, in the identity, the impact, we also talk about the fruit of the Spirit. Yes. I really want to emphasize the fruit of the Spirit is what carries the gifts of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because if you have no fruit and you have all gift, your, your effectiveness and your reach is limited. Yes. And I really feel that like God has really ministered to my heart that I really want you to, to speak about, about these specific about intimacy, falling in love with Jesus, That's identity, knowing your value in God, and impact, having the character of Christ to carry the gifts I've given you to reach people. That's so beautiful, Teresa. And I mean, that's that's so important too, because you know we hear people talking about, well, you have authority, you have authority, but you know, without knowing your identity, you how do you know how to use your authority? Right? Exactly. So that's that's part one. You have to know who you are right. in Christ, who right. He says you are, not what the who the world exactly. says you are. So when you know this then that authority that level then yes. you're going to know how to use that for exactly. his glory right that that is just so amazing yes. wow. so if people want to uh, get a hold of you your website and I know we will put it up on, on uh, the, the screen but what is it just it's a uh, Teresa Comparine ministry dot com and there's a contact link there mm -hmm. just put in there i'm interested in the deep calls i3 school and i'll make contact with you and, and give you the enrollment form give you an outline of what it is what we're going to be teaching okay. all that awesome. is going to be uh, awesome. is going to made available to That's them all, which you believe our time is up with oh, okay so praise much. god thank and you friends remember that worship wins wars so thank you so much for joining us today. If you'd like more information about my program, please contact me at mariagoldstein7 at gmail.com. Check out my website, www.voicesinthewildernesstv. Until next time, we wish you good health, success, and spiritual growth. God loves you, and so do we. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Salvation, this is a call for salvation. If you do not know Jesus, this is a call for salvation. The call for salvation, respond to the call for salvation. If you don't know the Savior, this is his presentation. It's been 2,000 years that have passed, you see, that Jesus died on the cross for us, laid his life down on Calvary. This is Christ the begotten.